We are now ready to create our first namespace in vSphere with Kubernetes. Cluster has been successfully deployed and configured. Let's go ahead and create the namespace. Since this was deployed through VCF, uh, we need to select the workload domain vCenter and cluster and just give a name to our namespace, ch-ns. Very quickly, we can see it's been successfully created. We can now close that information window and we can have a closer look at our namespace. I'm not going to add any permissions, but I will add some storage. And here what we're doing is we're selecting a storage policy, which will appear as a storage class within the namespace. I'm not going to do anything with limits either, but just to show you what you can do around limits. And of course, we don't have any pods or Tanzu Kubernetes clusters either. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to enable the image registry. This is using Harbor, another VMware product. And just through the single click of a button here, we can enable this image registry. We once again do need to select some storage because we are storing the uh, images on vSphere storage. And in this case, we'll be storing it on vSAN. So there's an overview of our registry as it is uh, in the middle deploying, deploying it out. Let's speed things up a little bit. And so we have our seven pod VMs now available to back our Harbor instance. I'm going to connect to Harbor now. You can see it had already got an IP address from the load balancer, the NSXT load balancer. I can log right in here and just take a look around. Now, every namespace that we create in Kubernetes for vSphere will get its own project. And at the moment we do have the project, but we don't have any uh, anything saved. In order to establish trust between my desktop and the um, Harbor image registry, I do have to put in place a certificate. And that goes in the following location. As you can see here, the 2002 actually matches the IP address of the Harbor instance. And once I have the certificate in place, I can successfully log into Harbor without any X509 errors. Great, so that's all taken care of. Now what I need to do is I need to log into my Kubernetes for vSphere environment or vSphere with Kubernetes environment. And so you can see the namespace there. You can see the IP address of my cluster as well. And the context is already set to my new namespace. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deploy Cassandra. I'm going to deploy a three node Cassandra application. Uh, you can see some information here. Now, before I do that, the image is going to be pulled from Harbor. That's what it says there, but I haven't actually pushed the image out to Harbor yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag a local image of Cassandra that I have here, and I'm going to push that out to my image registry, my Harbor image registry. And so then my manifest file, my YAML file, is able to pull that from Harbor as it deploys out the Cassandra pods. So there we go. It's uh, successfully been pushed into my Harbor image registry now. And so you can see my namespace, still don't have anything going here, but if I now go ahead and deploy out the Cassandra application, so I have the service as well as the stateful set. And as I said, it was the uh, three, three replicas in the stateful set. We can see the various information associated with Cassandra in my namespace right now. So the first pod is almost there. The first PVC has been created. And now if we search back there, we can see it in my namespace. This is the pod VM. That's the first instance of my uh, Cassandra application. A lot of useful information here, such as the ability to look at the YAML configuration. So you can see things like uh, the image, the sort of uh, resources that are being used, what volumes are being used, so on. Really good. And there goes my second uh, pod VM now. So yeah, it looks like it's coming up successfully. And you can see the pod count now has increased to two. And if I have a closer look, I have all of these uh, details available to me in vSphere with Kubernetes. I can see my stateful set. I'm currently at two out of the three desired pods. You can see which policy I'm using. I can see the persistent volume claims. Two out of three of those are up there already as well. Haven't applied any network policy, but you could certainly do that as well. And that's pretty much it. I think we just uh, give that another moment or two now. There we go. There's the third uh, pod VM being deployed now as well. And this is directly onto 
uh, vSphere with Kubernetes. So these Cassandra pods are actually running on ESXi hosts. And that concludes the demonstration. Hope you found it useful.